By now, you have learned the mechanics of creating charts. To put it more technically, you have learned how to configure visuals, which means you can create a chart at the same time, you can also format the chart as well. But there is more to cover, and we will learn more from the sample reports we are about to create. So we are going to build three pages of interactive reports, and let me just quickly show you what the reports will look like. So on the first page of the report, we are going to be visualizing sales against time period. And the granularity of the period we will be using here is mainly going to be by month and by day of the week. So we want to see the trends of our sales over several months. And we also want to be able to see how our different segments change in rank over those months. Then we want to also see what's the average sales per day of the week so that we'll be able to identify which days of the week do we have more sales and we'll also are going to be checking on the number of transactions per day of the week as well. Now, this report page, like other report pages as well, is going to allow users to change the context of what this whole report is defined for by using the slicers we have on the left hand panel. So when you change any of these slicers, for example, from one value to the next value, then your entire report page is going to update, including the text summary that we have at the top here. Another thing that we're also going to infuse into this report page is the ability for users to be able to come to any of the months, either from this line chart here or from this ribbon chart that we have right here. So users can go to any month, for example, do a right click on that month. This is August of 2015. So users will be able to right click on the point of the month and they'll be able to select an option to drill through into another report page. So when users basically drill into another report page, then they are going to land on a page that has a full scope of reports for the month that is selected. So if we drill through here to this reports page now, then we are going to be looking at a full report page for August 2015 that is going to display the top 10 states, the bottom 10 states by sales. And it's also going to show a metrics table that shows the number of transactions that is going to trigger shipments into those top 10 states. Of course, one other thing that we're also going to have on this page is a map visualization of the sales distribution. This is currently an error, and that's how it's going to be when you try to use a map for the first time in Power BI Dex. So we are going to see how to resolve this error. So page two basically is going to have exactly what I have just described now as a full independent page of its own. Users can also slice and dice the reports from the left hand margin that we we'll have here but something else we are going to add to this page is when a user goes to hover on any of the states in the top 10 states instead of getting to see the usual tooltip what they are going to see is a small chart that shows the segment shares of sales for the organization on page three we are going to have an advanced analysis that leverages Power BI's AI visuals that allow users, first of all, to be able to break down any of their sales values by any category they so wish to. So a user may, for example, come to the month of 2015, whereas sales is $470,000, and they'll be able to click on this node and see a breakdown of this $470,000 by any of these dimensions so if your user selects region for example then they are going to get a breakdown of the 470,000 per the different regions and they can still basically break down any of these guys again further by any other dimension okay then the second visual we are going to create on this page is a key influencers visual so a key influencers visual allows users to understand what are the prominent factors that tend to make sales to be high or that tends to make sales to be low or basically to increase and decrease sales. So users can select and change between increase and decrease so they can see the prominent data factors that allow sales to either go higher or to go lower. One other functionality that we will add to this page is the ability for a user to switch 
this page from the current view into a view that allows the users to manually type in the question that they would like to see about the data so a user can come here to click ask a question about your data and that's going to provide this dialog box where users can basically type in a question in this box and they are going to get the visual results of their question or they may just basically select any of the suggestions that we are going to create for them and they are going to get the results so once they see this they may if they wish go back to the default view of that report so without wasting more time let's start building